Hello, I'm Dan Coatesworth, editor of Shares Magazine. I'm here today with Job Curtis from City of London Investment Trust. Job, it's been a fairly good year for equities around the world. What's your thoughts on current valuations now, given that there's been a quite a good bull run? Well, the shares have had a good run, but you've got a lot of growth out there in the world. On some valuation metrics, such as P ratios, the market looks on the high side, but you are getting the profits growth coming through. But when you look at dividends, and particularly dividend yield, UK market's yielding around three and a half, which is pretty attractive compared with the alternatives, and the fact that you're getting dividend growth of around four to five percent. And this strong bias towards income that you've got, do you think companies should actually be paying these dividends at the levels, or do you think actually they should be investing more cash in their business to keep them competitive and make themselves more innovative? Well, I definitely think that companies need to invest, and we're really looking to be investors in companies which have got enough profits or cash flow to pay dividends and to invest in their underlying business, because if they don't invest in their business, they can't ultimately grow their profits and grow their dividends. And you know, you're not in it for fixed dividends, you're in it for growth as well as yield. So we, we definitely like to see our companies and would like to see them and want to see them invest. Your portfolio includes National Grid, Reckitt Ben Kaiser, GlaxoSmithKline. All these companies have been selling assets recently. What's your thoughts on companies doing this? Do you think it's okay for companies to sell assets if they're just non-core? Well, yes, I mean, these large companies have often got a range of different activities and um, they may be selling one part where they, which is worth more to somebody else in order to focus on other bits where they're growing. And you know, certainly in the case of Reckitt's, you mentioned they've made a big acquisition. So they, the disposal they made is much smaller than the acquisition. And, um, so National Grid's investing very heavily both in the UK and in the US. So, um, so I think this is just part and parcel of what corporate companies evolve. And, and a part of their evolution is to sometimes to sell off bits which m might well be worth more to somebody else. Shell and BP are amongst your largest holdings in the investment trusts. What do you think about the oil price at the moment, given it's struggling to go above $50 a barrel, and that's below the level at which many people think that Shell and BP need in order to generate the free cash to pay their dividends? Well, I think the key to both Royal Dutch Shell and BP is really adapting their cost base to the current oil price environment. And, you know, they have been very successful in doing this and managing themselves more efficiently. And in fact, when the oil price was higher, when it was up at $90 a barrel, the, the oil majors actually gave away a lot of the gains to their contractors and to the um, oil ser field services companies. So um, I think what we've seen with both BP and Shell is quite an impressive bearing down on costs. And you've seen it across the whole industry. And so um, they've certainly ad adapted to the lower, lower oil price environment. I'm confident they will continue to do so. You recently sold Berenston following a takeover bid, and earlier this year, Unilever, which is another one of your holdings, received a takeover bid, which it fought off. What's your thought regarding takeovers? Are you happy to sell if there's a good premium, or do you actually find it frustrating because you want to hold such companies for year, many years to come? Well, sometimes it um, is a bit sad. I mean, we going back, we held both Cadbury's and Boots, which are sort of difficult companies really to replace, you know, in certainly in the UK market context. So. Uh, on the other hand, particularly with Boots, it was a good price at, at the time. So I think you just have to look at each context and whether the takeover bid f fully values the company or not. I mean, in the case of Berenson, um, it has had trading difficulties in its UK operations, which have been underinvested in. And so the bid, when it came, the price was, was quite an attractive one, given that the company faced it a quite a sort of difficult two, two or three years while it um, rebuilt its um, profitability in the UK. Thanks, Job, and thanks for watching.